Huh? Peter, there's a bomb in the building. We're all tied up and only you can defuse it. Okay, I'm on my way. What's going on? We're tied up and there's a chemical weapon. We need your help, pronto. Wait, how did you call me then? Siri. Hello? If you don't defuse the bomb, the room will fill with hydrogen sulfide. You gotta use what you learned. In order to understand substitution reactions, you have to first understand an alkyl halide. Alkyl halides start with a regular hydrocarbon backbone, carbon and hydrogen. Wait, I had to draw all that too? The structure can be written like this for simplification. Oh, okay. Then add a halogen to the hydrocarbon backbone. These can be fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. There are also different kinds of alkyl halides. Primary, which is on a carbon that is attached to only one other carbon. Secondary, which is on a carbon that is attached to two other carbons. Tertiary, which is on a carbon attached to three other carbons. There are two types of substitution reactions. SN1, which involves a unimolecular process, and SN2, which involves a bimolecular process. Uh... Don't worry, we'll explain it later. Both processes involve nucleophiles. Those are molecules that are electron-rich and thus search for electron-deficient molecules to donate their electrons to. In an SN1 reaction with an alkyl halide, the halogen leaves the molecule, acting as a leaving group and taking a pair of electrons with it. This step in the reaction is independent of the nucleophile and is thus called unimolecular. Oh, okay. It leads to the formation of a carbocation, a positively charged carbon atom. The carbocation is an intermediate in the reaction, and it is a relatively stable but not very easily isolated molecule. Then, the nucleophile attacks the carbocation, forming the final product. On the other hand, in an SN2 reaction, everything happens in a concerted way. The nucleophile attacks at the same time that the leaving group, the halogen, leaves. This reaction involves a very unstable transition state in which you can see both the leaving group and the nucleophile undergoing the reaction. Thus, it's called bimolecular. The final product is formed from this one step. The reactivity rate of the substitution reaction is also dependent on the type of alkyl halides. For SN1 reactions, tertiary alkyl halides are favored most because the tertiary carbon can stabilize the carbocation formed during the first step of the process. On the other hand, SN2 reactions favor primary alkyl halides. There is less steric hindrance or bulk for the nucleophile to attack. An SN2 reaction with the tertiary alkyl halide is basically non-existent. Bomb, neutralization override selected. To deactivate the bomb and neutralize the gas, Choose the reactant that will work best under SN2 conditions. Primary alcohol selected. You may proceed. To neutralize the gas via SN2 reaction, first ensure there is a good leaving group. Correct. You have opted to change OH into a tosylate group, which is more stable. The reaction may now proceed via SN2. The hydrogen sulfide attacks at the primary carbon while the tosylate leaves. You now have a positively charged species Proton transfer selected in order to complete the reactions. Congratulations! You have neutralized the gas to produce a liquid. The bomb can no longer function. You have saved the day, Agent.